Hello, I'm Dr. Vince Mosca, a pediatric orthopedic surgeon at Seattle Children's Hospital and professor of orthopedics at the University of Washington. I'm going to present this global health video on juvenile idiopathic arthritis, focusing on the presentation of oligoarticular, also known as posseoarticular, JIA. Recently, I operated on a child who had polydactyly of the left foot, merely an extra sixth toe. In the induction room, Mother told me that she had noticed swelling of the third toe of the child's other foot about three months previously, and it had stayed swollen for the three months. The child wasn't in pain. It was just a swollen toe that was a little warm to touch, but she carried on her activities as a toddler. The graph I took of the child's foot showing diffuse, fusiform swelling of the third toe. It's also mild discoloration, but no ecchymosis, no redness, it was hard to tell if it was warm, but it certainly didn't hurt either while the child was just sitting there, nor when I palpated and manipulated it. So what impressed me was that here was an 18-month-old healthy girl with diffuse swelling of a toe for several months. The diagnosis immediately came to mind of juvenile idiopathic arthritis, oligoarticular type. I told mother that we would draw some blood tests after she was anesthetized so we wouldn't have to create some additional pain and those tests were sent for evaluation. I further told mother that once the test came back, I would contact her with the results, and that more likely than not, we would identify this diagnosis, and I would refer her on to the pediatric rheumatologist for further evaluation and management, and to the ophthalmologists for evaluation and management. Juvenile idiopathic arthritis is the new term for what used to be called juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. Juvenile rheumatoid arthritis, or juvenile idiopathic arthritis, was a condition often seen by pediatric orthopedic surgeons. With good medical management by pediatric rheumatologists, we rarely see the condition anymore. But it's important to bring this condition to the attention of healthcare providers because the diagnosis should be made early so medical management can be initiated early. This is a picture that is similar to one that was drawn by Dr. David Sherry, a former colleague, pediatric rheumatologist in Seattle, who now works at Children's Hospital Philadelphia. This is a representation of the typical child with posse articular, now known as oligoarticular, juvenile idiopathic arthritis, as a way to remember the manifestations. Her name is Anna. ANA stands for anti-nuclear antibody. It's a blood test that can diagnose juvenile idiopathic arthritis and is positive in oligoarticular JRA, JIA approximately 50% of the time. So a positive blood test confirms the diagnosis, whereas a negative blood test does not necessarily rule it out. ANA represents a roughly two-year-old girl, the average age and gender of a child with JIA, who is often ANA positive. Child presents with often one, but maybe up to five swollen joints. Typically, it's a knee or an ankle or subtalar joint, could be a toe, could be an elbow or a finger. It is almost never presenting in hip joints. Anna is smiling because although the joint or joints look swollen, they generally don't hurt very much. And that's in contradistinction to septic arthritis. As orthopedic surgeons, we see swollen joints that hurt or painful joints that aren't swollen. The characteristic of JIA is that there are weeks of swelling. The joint looks bad but feels good. For septic arthritis, this, the joint typically feels bad, but looks good. So here's Anna smiling with either a swollen toe or a swollen knee, could be warm, there could be some limitation of motion, but she's still moving around. The blood tests for my patient with the swollen third toe revealed positive ANA, negative rheumatoid factor, elevated sedimentation rate, and elevated C-reactive protein. These all confirm the diagnosis of juvenile idiopathic arthritis. And based on just the one toe swollen, the, the subcategory 
was oligoarticular in contrast to polyarticular or systemic onset. The rheumatologist will be seeing her in consultation shortly to confirm the diagnosis and begin medical management. The good news for the child and family is that JIA is very treatable. Many cases are cured, and for the others, the long-term disability is minimized by appropriate early management. I've also referred the child to our pediatric ophthalmology clinic, where they'll perform the slit lamp exam. The slit lamp is the proper way to evaluate iritis. A simple eye exam is not the way to diagnose it. The ophthalmologists know that if the slit lamp, exam, slit lamp exam is normal, that doesn't rule out iritis. It rules out iritis for now, because iritis may predate the onset of the swollen joint, or it may develop within several years after the swollen joints begin. So they'll do ongoing screening to identify iritis should it develop over the next few years so they can treat it medically and avoid the devastating manifestations of iritis, which are blindness. This is an image of advanced iritis. You can see the irregularity in the iris, and the iris is scarring to the lens. This person is already blind, and this is what we need to avoid by early diagnosis and medical management of iritis in children with JIA. I started by saying that this used to be a disease that orthopedic surgeons saw. With great medical management, we rarely see the conditions anymore. We don't see the degenerative arthritis of the joints. We don't see the overgrowth of limbs due to inflammation around growth plates. We need Anna to be cured by medical management. We need to make sure she does not become blind with healthy joints. And I hope that this Global Health video will help you think more about the child presenting, for example, as my child did, so we can start the early management and avoid long-term disability. Thank you for watching.